Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my expressing breast milk tips, advice, etc. video. It's not a very catchy title, is it? But basically, I'll just be sharing with you my experience and my story very quickly, firstly, and then I'll get into the advice and tips and some pumping essentials as well. Very quickly, my story and my background to this video is that I have been exclusively expressing breast milk for my son, Arthur. So before I had the baby and before I was pregnant, I never really knew what expressing was. I guess I kind of knew about it as a concept, but I never dreamt that I would be doing it, let alone exclusively. I only ever wanted to just breastfeed. Wasn't interested in pumping or bottles or any of that. However, circumstances were that Arthur had one tongue tie cut, then he had another one, and he was never able to breastfeed. After the second one, he didn't even want to go anywhere near me or near the breasts for quite a long time. However, having said that, after five months of exclusively expressing, he has just start started to be able to breastfeed properly and I have actually been able to stop expressing completely. So yeah, it's been a complete turnaround for me, but those five months were so, so difficult. It, it's a bit of a love-hate relationship because I loved the fact that I had a supply and that I was giving him my milk because even if he couldn't breastfeed, which I really, really was so disappointed about, I thought at least I can give him my milk. But it did come with some stresses, as I'm sure if you are expressing, you will know. But I don't want to put you off, but it is a hard, hard thing. And I don't think it's really spoken about enough, really. I didn't really know what to expect. But hopefully some of this advice and this video will help you out. So firstly, I'll come on to the pumping or expressing tips. Firstly, if you are thinking of exclusively breastfeeding, when your baby is born, you are going to be want to be pumping or expressing 8 to 12 times a day, which sounds a lot and it is, it is a lot, it is very often, but that is basically mimicking how often a newborn baby would be feeding. So you'll probably find that you'll be feeding every three hours at least because obviously every three hours would mean eight times so that's the very minimum that you should be doing once the baby is born. You may find that with that schedule you may be pumping a little bit extra but that's okay because you can store that in the fridge or freezer and you always have that as a backup. For me personally I wish that I did that when Arthur was born because there was a point in time where I was so stressed out actually and my supply I think was dipping and I didn't have any spare in the fridge or freezer at all. I was literally pumping, feeding, pumping and feeding it to him. And it was and it was really, really stressful. So if you do have spare, then save it. That's another little extra tip. So as you go on and the baby gets older, if you are still going for it and you're still exclusively expressing, you may find that you can drop a pump or two. So my schedule when Arthur was five months was I was doing the six times in a day and then one overnight as well so it kind of worked out maybe about half past eight in the morning half past 11 say half past two and then I might do one at 6 p.m 9 p.m one at midnight and then one around four in the morning as I mentioned you definitely want to be doing an express overnight your supply is at its highest in the early hours of the morning but you can't really afford to be going eight hours without expressing that would be good for your supply a question that I do get asked a lot is how often to express for. So I used to express for 20 minutes at a time. You don't want to keep on going, but you also want to express for long enough. So you may have heard about fore milk and hind milk. Firstly, your breasts make milk, that's it. However, at the beginning of a feed, it's often thinner and more watery, and that is often referred to as the fore milk. And then as the feed goes on, it begins to get a bit more fatter gradually and that's referred to as hind milk but it's not really kind of one lot is fore milk and one lot is hind milk it doesn't necessarily work like that however you do need to make sure that you're expressing for long enough to make sure you are getting past that letdown and you're getting to the fattier part of the milk so 20 minutes is a really good time to do it you don't want to keep on doing it if you're worried that your supply is low don't stress yourself out because I did that and I was literally expressing for the whole day, like I'd have little breaks. That's really not what you want to be doing. So give yourself 20 minutes. If you are finding you're not really having a letdown or that you're not producing enough in that time, just give it a few more minutes or maybe up to five minutes, half an hour at the most, I would say, and still give yourself those breaks. And eventually your breasts will know 
that you are trying to produce more milk kind of you doing that is stimulating and it's sending a signal to your breast to start producing more milk also try not to worry you may find that your flow varies and that's day to day and that can be affected by stress or not drinking enough but also at different times so I used to pump a lot overnight and first thing in the morning because you you will find that your supply is probably the highest at those times but sometimes during the day I might not get that much out or one day I'll be thinking no I don't have that much but as I said if you have a little bit of a supply anyway kind of stored in the fridge that you don't have to stress yourself out too much so don't worry and try not to compare yourself to other women either some women have loads seemingly they pump and you might see pictures of it on instagram or if you're on a facebook group or something and it's really hard and it's quite easy to get caught up in that but just try to ignore it if that's a bit of a trigger just concentrate on you if you are exclusively expressing you will want to double pump and by that i mean pump both breasts at the same time Obviously it saves you time because otherwise you're doing 20 minutes in 20 minutes and that is, no one's got time for that when they've got a baby. Uh, but what you can also do is do it. If you are breastfeeding, if you're like, obviously I couldn't do this, wasn't really an option for me, but if you can, you could feed baby on one side and then a pump on the other side as well. Double pumping though is the best thing for your supply if you can do it. Sometimes I found that I had to hold my baby Arthur in one arm and do one side and then swap So it's not always possible, but ideally that is what you want to be doing Now some pumps already have settings which mimic the baby's feeding pattern or you may have to adjust it yourself But you are, what you are trying to do is mimic how a baby feeds so you will find that they will do softer but faster sucks to initiate a letdown and then once the milk starts coming their sucks will get slower but harder so you will want to make sure that your pumps do that as i said your supply can be affected by stress unfortunately and as i said expressing can be quite difficult so it's not always easy but what you want to do is get the oxytocin flowing so by that you probably will have heard about it if you started reading up on expressing but people say that they find looking at their baby helps with that hormone buzzing around your body look at photos of baby if you're not with them have them close to you also some people say putting socks on the pump to hide how much milk they're collecting is useful because otherwise it's so so easy and tempting just to keep checking on you know how much am i getting how much is coming out and that can often be a bit stressful so just try and relax whatever that is for you try and do it because that will help with your supply a really good way of trying to increase your supply is to mimic cluster feeding which is when a baby will feed frequently to up your supply and that is called a power pump so what you would do is pump for 20 minutes have a break for 10 minutes pump for another 10 minutes another break of 10 minutes and then pump again for a further 10 minutes so that is an hour and again that might be difficult but if you can power pump once a day then your supply should increase another way of increasing your supply is before you pump just doing a bit of hand expressing and then during the expressing you can be massaging and doing some breast compressions and then after expressing you can do a little bit more hand expressing not for long i'm literally talking about a couple of minutes at, at the very very most but that just helps to get that milk out and stimulate your breasts you can also apply a warm compress so i used to get a warm damp flannel and just put that on the breast before i would express i didn't always do that but at the time when my supply was dipping because i was stressed i would do that warm compress and that definitely did help if you are expressing exclusively then really you should be investing in a hospital grade pump so those are the pumps that the hospitals kind of recommend and approve of having said that you know you may find you don't need to do that but that is the recommendation at the end of this video I will show you my pumps I've got three and one of them is a hospital grade one so I will show you them at the end as well also I just want to say that what you get out when you're pumping isn't necessarily a reflection of what your baby is getting so if you are breastfeeding and expressing and if you're expressing and not getting much out I know it's really easy to think oh does that mean my baby's not getting enough it doesn't mean that so long as your baby doesn't have any issues like my baby had if they are breastfeeding and they seem settled and they're getting all the wet nappies etc all the signs are looking good then you don't need to worry 
if you aren't getting enough out expressing, that doesn't mean the baby isn't getting enough at your breasts. The last tip I want to say is I kind of touched on it, but it's just to make sure that you stay hydrated and that you're eating well. I think we probably all know when we're breastfeeding we should be drinking and you probably are more thirsty anyway but definitely make sure because if you aren't keeping your fluids up that could definitely make your supply decrease slightly similarly if you're not eating and taking care of yourself that can decrease it as well there are a lot of thoughts about what foods help your supply I think oats are meant to be really good so I have porridge and I have oaty bars for snacks I have muesli in the evening and it seems to work well I've kind of always done that so I don't know if I stopped that how my supply would be but yes, oats are meant to be really good. So those are all my pumping tips. Next, I'm going to move on to some essentials that you need. So firstly, of course, you will need a pump. And as I said, I would recommend getting a double pump. So some different brands, they kind of sell their pump as a single one. So it's only got one pump mechanism and then they also do a double one. So I would always recommend getting a double one if you can plus some spares because to keep washing them after every expressing session is really really difficult it depends how much support that you have but it's really hard to find the time so definitely get yourself some spares or a whole other set of pumps which is basically what i've got some people find a pumping bra useful so that is just a normal nursing bra so it's got the clips here but it's basically the material is made so it's got some holes and you can kind of put the pump in it and so technically as long as your pump is hands free so it doesn't need to be plugged into the mains some are so do check that but in theory you could be hands free so you put your pump in like a bag around your waist you've got the actual pumps on your breast in your pumping bra and yeah you're hands free when you sit down to express, just make sure that you've got everything to hand, just as you would if you were breastfeeding at the breast. So like your phone, the TV remote, or whatever else that you need, some snacks in your water. Breast pads, definitely need some breast pads. So if you, as I said, if you're double pumping, fine. If you're having to do it one by one for whatever reason, as we all know, the other boob can leak. So make sure that you've got breast pads to hand and also in your bra ready to go. You will also need a steriliser because if you're expressing milk you will need to wash up and sterilise everything and the bottles and then you also will need some storage bags or bottles. So we actually mainly use bottles because I just kept most of my milk in the fridge but you can also buy bags which I did use sometimes and they are brilliant for the freezer. Just make sure that you lie them flat and then they will be frozen that way. So moving on to how I sterilise and store my breast milk. There is some debate, so breast milk is sterile, so many people say you don't need to sterilise, you only need to wash with hot soapy water, your pumps and your bottles. Some people say you only need to sterilise once in 24 hours. However, I just preferred sterilising after every use, just so that I knew there was no mistake in it, everything was completely clean. Some people also say you only need to sterilise up to the baby is a certain age when their immune system is a bit better so just do your research I'm not going to tell you what to do but you just do what works best for you and your baby we have a steam steriliser and a microwave steriliser so the steam is a plug-in one we actually find the microwave one just a bit easier to use and one of my pumps I cold water sterilise so we have a washing up bowl specifically for this and we just fill it with cold water, some Milton sterilising liquid and we put everything in there. Some of your pumps may also be able to be boiled but we did do that in the beginning but that was so time consuming and difficult so we didn't really bother with that but have a look at your instructions and most pumps you can sterilise in different ways so again it's whatever works best for you and your family. Storage wise you may hear the general rule is room temperature six hours, fridge six days, freezer six months but it really does depend on the temperature so room temperature really is between four and six hours and if your room is a certain temperature then you wouldn't want to be leaving it even that long same for the fridge so I would gen generally I would leave my milk out at room temperature no longer than four hours and then give it to the baby and then in the fridge I would probably only leave it two to three days and really you want to be pushing your milk to the back of the fridge if it's in the door then 
that six days rule wouldn't apply so it needs to be in the coldest part of your fridge so once you've stored your milk in the fridge or freezer so as i said my majority of my milk came from the fridge and i've still got some in the freezer but i only ever actually used it from the fridge so i just used to pour it into the bottle that i was going to be feeding arthur with and then just run it under some quite warm water and obviously you can test the temperature just by putting a few dots on the inside of your arm and that will make sure it's not too hot for the baby obviously it's probably better for the baby i think if it's a similar temperature to your own breast milk especially if that's what they're used to if you're breastfeeding as well or have been breastfeeding however some babies don't mind it straight from the fridge so again that's your choice there is quite a lot of information out there about storing breast milk and how you warm it up and how you defrost it and so on so i will leave some really good links because i found a couple of websites that are really really good so i will leave them linked below so you can have a little read and find out all the information that you need so i just want to say quickly as i said you need to express a lot during the day if, if that's all you're doing and it can be really hard and i definitely wouldn't have been able to have done it without support so initially i had my mum here every day and then as i'm filming this we're currently in the or we're coming just coming out of it the lockdown just to give this some sort of context so my husband has been here working from home but he has been able to help me or i would do it in his lunchtime and whatever but basically i would try and express when arthur was either asleep or i might be able to occupy him long enough on the play mat now he's been a bit older and it is really difficult expressing one thing but then you obviously need to be washing up everything which is why i would really really recommend getting a second set at least of all your pumps in your parts because it can be quite hard trying to entertain a baby long enough to then express for 20 minutes but yeah that is kind of how i used to manage it either when he was asleep or when he was playing so i will just show you the pumps that i use and i will say i did buy the lv which you may have heard of and it is amazing if you can get it to work for you it is amazing so it's basically a completely portable wireless pump and it's kind of they kind of come like shells like this and they just kind of stick on to your boobs and they sit in your bra and you can control them from an app on your phone or they do have buttons on the top as well and the kind of mechanic the pumps like this and then it's kind of got a little bottle underneath and the whole thing just goes on your breast I know a lot of people struggle with the LV and it could be that you've got the wrong size but I tried all sizes so it comes with two sizes you can buy a smaller size separately which I did yeah I just find it would just slip I tried kind of tightening my bra strap or loosen it it also comes with bra strap extenders which I tried all sorts of things but I just found it wouldn't stay in place so it would begin okay and then eventually it would just kind of seem to slip and it just wouldn't collect as much milk it just really used to annoy me to be honest and i kind of got a bit put off using it but if you can find if you can get it to work for you then it is amazing because you are so so hands free it is really really amazing it's useful for trips out and so on i mean i've used my pumps in the car not driving but i have used them in the car as a passenger and that's been absolutely fine but with the lv obviously you are completely hands free there's no wires either and they do make your boobs look about five sizes bigger if you've got it underneath your jumper or whatever but having said that yeah you could get away with it sat in a cafe in theory the lv does state that it's a silent pump i definitely didn't think it was silent but it was 100 percent the quietest pump of all the pumps so if you were in a busy cafe you probably wouldn't hear it but if you're sat in an office and it's really quiet you probably could just about hear it but yeah it is really good if it works for you a lot of people say that they can't use that just if you're exclusively expressing because it's not good enough a lot of people find the suction isn't strong enough which i would agree with but obviously i couldn't ever get it to stay in place so that would be the case for me but it is expensive but it kind of depends what your situation is how often you'll be using it but i think a lot of people would say if you are exclusively expressing then perhaps you will need a different pump as well so anyway let's get on to the pumps that i've got so the very first pump i don't even know what make this up is because it came from amazon but it's this one here and it's just a tiny blue one and it comes with two bottles like this and it didn't come with any extra sizes so if this is the one size fits all or not um and yeah the tube is over there but basically the tube attaches one to the other as you can see 
it's completely portable so it charges up like an iPhone so you charge it up and then it's wireless which is really good so this is one that you could put in a handbag and wear it around the house with your pumping bra on I never really used used it that way but I've used it in the car and that was really good it is definitely on its last legs now however but it, it was okay it was fairly cheap but yeah that was my first pump my next pump is the hospital grade one so when my supply was dipping we thought it might be because this pump just wasn't that good but i, I don't think it was that so we then bought a hospital grade pump so this is the calypso ardo and this is a double pump as well and it looks like this so this little cap this tube wires up to that and it just fits on to the pump like that if you're using it as a double pump then obviously there's two what i found though with both of these pumps is that the double pump wasn't as good suction so if we, if i just used it as a single pump it was so much better so what i used to do is have that one on one side and that one on the other side which you maybe you might think that's a bit of a faff but it just worked that well for me also sometimes if i found I needed to kind of start one boob first and then I might let that go and then I might start the other one and do a double one and then that one would stop and I would carry on with that one and that was sometimes if Arthur was still awake or he just needed a bit more of attention and I couldn't double pump I kind of did it a bit staggered which is not completely ideal but it was it did kind of work so this one as I think most hospital grade ones are it is mains controlled so it does plug in However, this one can run on batteries, but I think it takes so many and it, I don't know how long it will last, but it's so heavy, you probably wouldn't really want to kind of carry it around with you. This one is fairly quiet, definitely compared to this one. Let's see if I can do it for you now. It doesn't sound that loud, but at night time, that would sound really loud. And then this one is this. Oh, I think my battery must have gone. And this one, this one is a lot quieter than that. And I mean, that's quite a basic setting as the other one. This one has got vacuum and cycle. So that's suction control and that's your speed. So it doesn't have kind of any preset programs, but it's really easy to use. I think it's quite well thought of this one, but I'm in a Facebook group called, I think it's exclusively Pumping Mums UK. It's so good. Go on there if you are exclusively expressing because it's really, really helpful. And a lot of people recommend the Spectra as well, which is a hospital grade one, I think. But yeah, this one did work well for me. And then we had the LV. I didn't really use it. So when we sold that one, because I bought it secondhand, but unopened, but then I sold it. So if you are thinking about it, have a look on eBay, because you may well find someone there. The next one I bought was the Bella Baby. And this one, to be honest with you, I haven't... I didn't use it that much because we actually bought it quite recently and now obviously I don't need to use it at all but I don't even know if it's maybe as good as the hospital grade one I don't know but again it can be used as a double pump or a single pump and it still seems pretty strong even as a double pump so that was really good volume wise I would say it's probably in between those other two ones so it's not really quiet I don't know if you can hear that and this one has got loads and loads of different settings so it's quite conf confusing but yeah this one's really good and again on that Facebook group this is the one that is recommended the most and it's only about I think about 40 or 50 pounds on Amazon and I actually bought it when there was a deal on and I think I got it for 38 or something which was even cheaper than this so say cheap one so I would definitely recommend this one and similarly it is you it's chargeable so you charge it up like with an iPhone again and it's portable it's really light quite small again so it's really easy to use and yeah it comes with this tube and as you can see I've been using this single most recently and it just fits in there and then if you were to be using it as a double it's got this other tube here so this would go in the other pump but if you want to use it as a single you just kind of tuck it in there and it's a single pump 
and yeah, I find it really, really good. If you would like me to do any more in-depth, detailed videos about any of these pumps, then just let me know, or if you've got any questions, just pop them in the comments section below, and I'll be sure to answer them. I know it's really, really confusing. When we were in the hospital, because I was in the hospital for six days after Arthur was born because he wasn't feeding, and so we kind of really had to quickly get bottles and a sterilizer and a pump we didn't really know what we were looking for i don't even think i looked i think matt my husband just did it all for me so i wasn't in the position really i was too stressed and too busy to have a good research so we kind of just bought the first things that we saw so if you don't have time i would recommend getting the bella baby so i hope this video helps you if you are in a similar position because i wish that i just spent just however long this video is going to be just kind of looking at it and having a little research. So that is absolutely everything. I know I've covered a lot. I Hopefully it's not too boring. Uh, I think I might put some timestamps below so you can kind of fast forward to the bits that you want to see. Uh, it's a bit late for me to be saying this to you now. But anyway, I hope that video is really, really helpful to you. If you've got any questions at all, then please just let me know. Or if there's a video that you want me to do about something specific, then I can do that as well. And just know that if you are expressing or thinking about it, then I think I think that we should be proud because it is such a hard job, but it's so amazing. It's such an amazing thing to do because you know that you are giving your baby breast milk, even if they can't have it from you, even if you don't want to breastfeed or you can't breastfeed. It's kind of nice to know that you are giving babies breast milk. But of course, having said that, if it's not for you at all and you're going down the formula route then of course we all know babies can thrive on any milk if it's formula or breast milk but if you are considering expressing then well done and I hope that your journey does go well. People express for various reasons as well so even if you're just doing it part-time or you want to go out or you want your husband to maybe give your baby a bottle of milk for the night feed or maybe you're going back to work I think a lot of people start expressing when they're returning to work then I hope this video was helpful to you as well it goes without saying I think motherhood is difficult and if you are finding that exclusively expressing is taking a toll on you and I think it it does and I don't want to put you off but I think it definitely can do obviously there's always a tipping point if you are finding you are getting to that point and it's too much for you then don't have any guilt about stopping because it is really hard. Having said that, I know some people do it for months and months and months. I did it for five months and I think I definitely would have continued. I kind of did have really, really low points. And for me, obviously, I really wanted to breastfeed and I was absolutely gutted that he wasn't able to do it. So obviously I'm over the moon that we can now, but I think I got through that really difficult bit. And then in the end, it was just a bit more routine. I wasn't stressing as much. In the beginning, I was really, really like, oh my God, like, I, you know, it's one o'clock, I need to express right now, like on the dot. And I used to really stress out if I couldn't do it or if he was still awake. And yeah, it's hard. And I know that I'd be sometimes feel guilty. I would feel guilty that I'd be thinking, oh, you know, I want Arthur to have a nap soon so that I can express. Or I'd feel guilty because instead of holding him or cuddling him or playing with him I would have to express and it kind of does get you down but I got through that and then it just got a bit more of a routine I was a bit more relaxed with it so if you are struggling with it just know that that is normal and if you can get through it you may find you're able to deal with it a bit better and manage it but if you can't and you want to stop expressing or just lower it because of course you could just express a bit less and just give some breast milk then whatever you choose to do just know and have confidence and faith in yourself that you are making the best decision for one your baby and two you because you are important you're the mum to your baby and you need to take care of yourself as well I know my health visitor said to me expressing is a labour of love that is absolutely true but I guess many aspects of mother motherhood are a labour of love and whatever we do is for our baby. So just do what you can do, do what you want to do, be proud of yourself no matter what you're doing. I really hope that this video helps you. I'm really sorry that I've rambled. I am definitely am a bit of a rambler but I hope that this helps you in some way, shape or form. 
please do comment below if you find this video helpful and please subscribe for more because I would love to have you over on my channel and I'm going to be sharing all things motherhood, there's lots of pregnancy related stuff as well if you are still at that point but yes, lots of baby updates and routines and lifestyle and home videos, all of that stuff so I would love to have you as a subscriber Thank you so, so much for watching as always. It really does mean a lot to me and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye everyone.